<laughs> okay, I'm back. I'm doing this the old-fashioned way, and I am just using my phone. I'm not using my laptop and doing the two-camera thing. Let's see if this works. I'm not sure if it's my internet or my laptop. It seems to be running hot and cold sometimes, so I'm not real sure. Let's see how this goes. If anybody's back on, I appreciate your patience. Um, I will show <laughs> um, a tutorial on a card that I made for my swap on my cruise, and I'll show you some of the gifts that I got while we were there. Um, so you know, give me some thumbs up or hearts or something, some kind of feedback that says that we are doing okay right now. And I'm just going to have to flip my camera around by hand and um, show you my desktop. So i like to know before we had problems with buffering and wasn't connecting well, I was off and on cutting in and out. So let's see how we do this time. All right. Let me know. Yeah. Third time is a charm. I hope Debbie, you're, you're a diehard. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. So let me know, Debbie, are we doing better? Is this any better? Let's see how it goes. All right. So starting 20 minutes later, let's see how everything pans out. Um, as usual, if you're watching one of my lives, leave me um, your, uh, write something in the comments. Tell me maybe where you're from if I, if I don't already know, or, you know, it's like to, for the people who are signing on to see who we're crafting with today, who we're, you know, hanging out with for the afternoon, nice Saturday afternoon. I keep losing track of the days. When you go on vacation and then come back, it's like, wait a minute, what day is it? <laughs> on the cruise, in the elevators, they had a little plate that they would change every day that told you what day of the week it was. <laughs> because, you know, some days you forget, right? You don't have your regular routine. You're not looking at a calendar all the time. So, yeah, so it was nice. You get in the elevator. Oh, it's Thursday today. All right, good to know. <laughs> I think I need that in my house. Um, all right, looks good so far, Debbie. All righty. So, everyone, hop on. When you leave a comment, you get to be in my raffle. So, um, at the end of the video, sometime later on, I go through, I write down all the names, I put them on a wheel, and we um, then we have a raffle and... and you have a chance to win a nice prize. Okay. Hi, Marsha. <laughs> Thank you for coming on again. All right. I think we got it this time. Let's keep our fingers crossed, say a prayer, and, and we'll be good to go. All righty. Um, I know yesterday when people couldn't see my down camera, I was showing all my little gifts. I said, oh, I have this. I got this. I got this. On this da, 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 and nobody could see anything. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview. I'm going to show you my swap cards really quickly. So if you were here on Friday... Don't worry, I'm not going to take as much time because I do want to get to the tutorial for making the card today. All right? Okay. So I am going to come over here. I'm going to switch my camera around. I have to do it manually because the other stuff was just giving me a little, a little agita, <laughs> as my Italian friends like to say. All right. So here we go. I'm going to flip this down. Excuse me while I... Lift up the camera. Ta -da. Alrighty, little earthquake action here. Okay. Alright, this camera's a little close. Let me lift it up a little bit. Okay. We'll manage with this small little space right now. All right, so this welcomed us on our cabin door. It's a magnet, and different people have got different colors, and it was all, um, it, it identified where all the Stampin' Up! people were. There were 307 of us, or 308 of us, um, on the cruise, and people brought friends and family, and, um, so all together, there were about 720 people. Um, so these were fun to see. A lot of people brought them indoors because sometimes people who are not simping up go in and just kind of take them off the door if they like them. So I didn't want mine to get stolen. Sometimes people forgot them in the room, though. They said, oh, no, I forgot to take my magnet. But I'm glad I remembered mine. My husband grabbed it the last second. So whew, I'm glad about that. So speaking of prize wheels, on our cruise, we... Went to hospitality room every day, and there was another 
um, there was there were different prizes that could be won. We spun a wheel, and depending on which icon the wheel landed on, we got to choose a prize. So, you know, there might have been like a bunny and some other things. Um, landed on the bunny, you got to choose this prize. You landed on something else, you got to choose, you get to pick the other prize. So, some of the things that, that we got really quickly. Um, the first day, I actually got this little horse. So this is actually a Swedish thing, but I you know, close to Norway, I guess. I had this big horse from my grandfather from years and years and years ago. And I was able to get a little guy to join him. So I'm very happy to have this little guy there. So that was one of the prizes. We, I also, another day, got these nice magnet clips. Okay, you can always use those on the refrigerator, right? And then we also, I also got um, a deck of cards with the Norway, Stampin' Up! Norway logo on there and Stampin' Up! It says 35 years. Stampin' Up!'s been going 35 years already. So, great company. Another day, I got this very nice, shiny, silver Stampin' Up! keychain. And then we also, I also got this sticker. And I was thinking, gee, that's kind of hard to see. But when I peeled it off, it's really, like, see-through. So, I will get to put it on something and the color will show through. Yeah, you see? So that'll be fun. I'll find something special to put that on. I got a hat in Norway. You need to be warm. It goes, it was kind of cold some days and we walked up to glaciers and it was windy. And so this hat definitely came in handy. I brought a headband and I had hoods, but wore this and boasted that we were with Stampin' Up. And I also got some this little pouch of some coasters. So I always need some coasters laying around the house. And especially with the grandkids, don't want heavy ones. You know, so these are, are light. They can throw them around <laughs> and we'll um, protect our table at the same time. Nice, heavy felt coasters there. And welcoming in our room. Again, here's that Stampin' Up! logo. We had a nice card saying, welcome to the Norway trip. And it came with four cupcakes. They were very yummy. Very yummy. And at our first meeting, they announced that our 2025 trip is going to be in Disney World. So that'll be lots of fun. And for us, no plane ride. We like to drive down and visit my father and, and his friend Carol. So, um, so that's going to be fun. People were excited about that. So we got the Disney themed, um, Rice Krispies cakes and cake pops and, you know, so the Stampin' Up! treated us nicely and also gave us um, $50 cash to spend on the ship. So that was lots of fun. So we're not doing coffee and a car, but I do have my iced tea today and my Stampin' Up! Tumblr. These, by the way, um, you can get some logo products on the Stampin' Up! website. So if you're interested, go there. You can get those these tumblers in all the 22 to 24 in colors. And they're really nice. I, I love them. Like I I use mine all the time. Not just because it's stamping up, but I just, it, it closes nicely. I love the color. I love the size. It doesn't sweat. Keeps things cold. Keeps things hot. All right, really quickly. On the ship, we got to do a swap. Now, we didn't have to. Just people who wanted to made 26 cards. One went on display in the hospitality room. And, um... And then the other 25 got mixed and matched and put into Ziploc bags that were given out, given back to us. So we came back with 25 different cards. So here are some. I showed these on Friday really quickly, but I'll show you again really quick here. Um, here are some that some people actually use the Norway theme on there and um, made it nice and fun. So look at this fun fold. Isn't that cool? I love how that is kind of like has this little corner off and this pops up and... Um, so, yeah, so this is a lot of fun. All right. Oh, Isabel, you're back. Okay. I thought you were going to bed. It's late over there in South Africa. <laughs> Can't sleep? Well, um, thanks for, for getting on. Okay. Hopefully this is good. Hi, Lee. Nice to see you. All right. So some people use Norway as part of their swap card. And this was one that uses cute little zany zoo animals and a lot of beautiful paper from this bright and beautiful collection here. Um, you'll see many cards with that. I love that one. That's what I use on my swap card. 
this is another neat fun fold card. A lot of the next few cards I'm showing you are going to be using the Countryside in designer series paper. Those beautiful blues, they look like um, wallpaper that you might see in an old bed and breakfast. That was the idea from Stampin' Up. But look at this, it kind of has this different shape, has this peak at the top. You open it up kind of like a gate fold, but then look at these folds over here. Isn't that cool? We'll have to do that one sometime soon as a coffee and a card. All right. So that's, love that paper. Here's, here are a few more using um, products from that suite. The folder goes along with that. The, um, this little, these little tags that are concentric uh, shapes and uses the same paper and all the blues, the ribbon, those things all come in on, on, in the suite. So really, really pretty cards there. I love blue. That's my favorite, favorite color. Here's some more with that same paper. And, um, this one is from the crafting with you. It has the little stamp and cut and emboss machine and comes with some dies that cut out that you can cut out scissors and you can cut out paper trimmers and it's just really adorable. It has a sewing machine. It has an easel. So anything crafty. It, um, that's a cute little set crafting with you. Page 91 in the catalog. Okay. And notice how this card has a little bit shorter front so that you can see the designer paper on the inside. This one has a fun little fold that opens this way. Okay. It's a Z fold of sorts, but it kind of opens up, which is fun. And this one is actually from another suite called Circle Sayings. All of these are the sayings from Circle Sayings. It um, has some arched flowers that you can put on there. This one uses a little bit of Wink of Stella. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that on there. Just to give it a little bit of a shimmer, um, Wink of Stella is actually comes in this little pen there's a little brush on there and very very fine glitter and it doesn't rub off it's all within the liquid and it's, it just stays right on there it doesn't rub off and um so you can see this one the arch was on the top this one on the bottom the different colors um this also comes in as a bundle with um, a large circle punch which is nice. I like to see some of our circle punches coming back. Cupcake, smile, thank you. You have a lot of different options on that. All right, and notice it uses that same embossing folder that was on with the Countryside in Designer Series paper. So that's lovely. All righty, so here are some others that use another fun embossing folder, um, Exposed Brick, it's called. And that's on page 168 with the other embossing folders. And again, it uses that same die that is from the um, the country, let me pull out that set, the Countryside Corners set. This is the stamp, and it's all one stamp. You get all of those um, designs and, sh and size shapes in here, but you can then use the die cuts to cut them all out. You can cut out any one size. You can cut out um, a bunch of them to make frames. So I just did a whole bunch once and, um, now I have them ready to go. So that one is really, really versatile. I just love it. So you could see here, she used just the one piece on that size and then a dye, everything monochromatic. That's the copper, um, copper clay. One of the new colors that we have. So there you go. This one uses the same embossing folder, but just all in white with a little bit of a color on the, on the gold there and some die cuts. I actually cased this card with my New York VIPs. I do a meeting with them once a week. And so I, I use different folder, different colors, um, and actually the same flowers. They were uh, uh, the flower punch and different die cuts. But so you have the same exact layout, just different colors and you have a little bit different look, a okay? different stamp set too. So um, this is from Layering Leaves and the sentiment was as well. I love the, the font on that one. So I wanted to do something with my girls. So I said, okay, here's a card. Let's case it and make it slightly different. All right, here's that same embossing folder, the exposed brick. So look how pretty that is. That's, that's, um, 
might be a little bit hard to see on the camera, but it's um, not the whole card. It only goes up to the strip of designer series paper. And that paper is so pretty and, and nice bold colors that you don't even need much to make that really pop, right? And um, one die cut, a little twine, a couple little rhinestones. You've got a beautiful card right there. And speaking of an easy card, this one here is called... Um, nature give me a second marvelous nature and it's actually two stamps that come in this set this all is just one stamp right here the everything that's done in black with the birds one stamp and look how how nice and it's a nice strong looking card maybe good for a male card or anybody who likes birds there's swallows we have a lot of swallows around here and um i just love the look of that one stamp and then the bunch of layers. Of course, you have your sentiment as well. Okay, the other one is a circle with a fern on it. Again, very pretty. I don't have a card with that, but after seeing this card, I had to order the stamp set. So <laughs> I'll show you that another time. Little typewriter is adorable. You can see this one comes in German. Uh, we had people from all over the world, Germany, France, UK, Australia, people all over um, earn this trip, but only... Less than 1% of all the demonstrators have earned this on this trip. And that's not bragging. I'm not bragging. It's a required disclaimer that Stampin' Up! Um, asks us to give every time we make a post or every time we, we have a video to actually say that and, and to post it because it's not typical of an average Stampin' Up! Per, uh, demonstrator. A lot of people are just hobbyists, and it takes a lot of work to achieve that Um the incentive trip. So that's a disclaimer of less than 1% worldwide. And there are over 52,000 demonstrators worldwide. So I feel honored to be part of that really select group. So typewriter is adorable, has um, different options. You can see that in the regular catalog as well. Okay, then on to some flowers. This one is from the um, online exclusive. So it's called Irresistible Blooms. Has dyes and the flowers, the stamps. Look how pretty and springy those, those colors are. This uses um, a stencil to do that little background there and then just pop up the flower and it has um, some of the gilding flakes on there to make a little pop of gold. So I love how the little banner's there with the thin ribbon behind it. People who are on the fence about wild wheat, well, there it is right there using that with the, um, looks like Blackberry Bliss and it's, um, it really makes it pop. It's a nice color. I, I like it. Different ways to use colors that you weren't thinking about. A nice um, card using the, Let's Go Fishing Designer Series paper, and it pairs with the Gone Fishing Suite on page 78 of the main of the regular catalog. So that is just really cute. Makes a nice sentiment card, I mean, a masculine card, and obviously this is retirement, but good for Father's Day coming up. I know that's, if you ordered it, you won't get it in time, but anyway, keep that in mind for the men in your life or the people who like fishing. All right, here's that paper again, the Bright and Beautiful. Um, a lot of fun colors, those nice bright colors, good for kids or any birthday or celebration. And this uses a lot of different papers from that collection. There are balloon dyes, star dyes, circles, and a lot of different things you can do with that. Look at how this um, card incorporates all of that. All right, moving on to some zany animals. Here we go. We have a couple of these guys here. These all come from Zany Zoo. We saw the um, raccoon on one of the earlier cards and how that incorporates a lot of different um, different techniques. This is on watercolor paper, a little splotch of ink in the background, and you pop up your focal point. Look how nice, a nice, clean, simple look to that. This one has a nice, fun fold where the just the middle pops up. And the side panels are raised on dimensional dots. I love just the very soft um, glow of the color in the background with the blending brushes. So it just makes it look not so plain and stark. Just that little bit of a glow makes a big difference over there. I love these little gals doing their knitting and life is better with friends like you. Nice to be crafting together. I mentioned on Friday how the Zany Zoo um, stamp set, okay, you have one stamp set obviously she she did it three times and colored them differently and but the paper is from the countryside inn 
And this little strip is from the Daisy, um, Fresh as a Daisy designer series paper. So you don't have to stick just with the suite. You can branch out and bring in other products from other suites too and make that all work. So those are, those are fun. I just love those there. And speaking of fun animals, this one is from, um, Hey Chuck, it's called, and it is, a kind of a spinoff of other stamp sets that we had before that were called Hey Chick. And um, okay, this one here is the new pecan color. Yes, pecan pie. And um, it's very pretty. I, I like it. It's a nice soft brown. Very nice. Um, so here's Chuck. Okay, working with the rooster this time. And what's really fun with this one here is, um, oh, hi, Deb. Um, I love this this um, little frame here. This is, can you see that there? It goes all the way around that layer. And you can see there's a smaller one for the smaller layer here as well. And this is from, um, this is on the online exclusives. I'm forgetting the name of it. Oh, Radiating Stitches. Um, I have some notes here. So. <laughs> you think I'm good at remembering them. I'm pretty good, but I still need some notes to make sure. All right, so um, Radiating Stitches give you a nice border on some of those pages. So that's something else that now I need to get. I need one of those too. So this is just so cute. Something, um, and a, a cute fold too. So half of the front was cut away and this was laying over so you can see the inside at the same time. I love it. I love it. And then this was the card that we got in our gift pack from Stampin' Up. And here's that pecan pie again or pecan depending on where you're from, how you want to say it. Pecan, pecan, tomato, tomato. <laughs> um, so of course this little monkey is just adorable and that's the set that I use for my swap as well. Um, this uses the ferns in the background. So there's another way of using products from other collections. Okay, the the ferns we had last year already and the monkey was new to the new catalog here. So, but that works very well with the vines and the other flower um, leaves there. So, all right, so here we go. Here is, I had posted this. So some of you had seen this already. Here's my card here. Oh, hi, Lois. Hi, good to see you on. Thanks for joining. Um, here's my card. And I did this technique with my New York girls one day. And I said, you know what? That's kind of different. I don't see anybody else doing this. So I'm going to do that for the cruise. There was a little pressure because this is all with very top demonstrators. Okay, if you watch any other demonstrators, you probably know who a lot of the, the um, very popular and... Um, uh, you know, avid stampers are, and we got to see a lot of these people and, and meet with them. Some of them, million dollar winners, achievers, two million, three million platinum demonstrators and, and whatever. So it was really fun to hang out with everybody. So I figured, okay, I don't have a name for this, but I think we named it a breakthrough window card because it's almost like this little guy is popping through this little window, broke through, tore the paper, and is coming out to say happy birthday. So I'm going to do that really, really quickly. I'll show you how to make that. This is where the inspiration came from. A long time ago, I made this card with my former upline, who's not a demonstrator anymore. But um, this was ages ago. I mean, look how simple. Look how plain and simple we used to be. We've come a long way, baby, right? <laughs> um, so this was just cardstock with some DSP on the inside so that when you open it, you can see that it um, has some pattern. Now, I'm, I'm going to move this over. You can see that this was so long ago that this was before Stampin' Up! made double-sided paper. All right, so it's just white on the background. So we didn't, we couldn't do something like this where we see some color on the inside. Um, so anyway, there's that little girl in the background, but I wanted the monkey to be bursting through. This was my prototype. I used some designer series paper that just retired. Um, this pattern was six by six um, from the regular line of color designer series paper. So I kind of made this and I said, all right, I have to use current products the new products. So, and I didn't want to use this up because I had just enough to make my 
um, the cards I needed for my swap. So two different versions of the same card. This one a little bit more jungle looking maybe. This one more birthday. All right, and then here's some other little ideas. This one I put a saying on the inside. These were with products that are now retired as well. All right, I love the pansies. We still have the pansy set, but this pansy here was cut from the designer series paper, and this was one of the other patterns in that paper as well. And then this one I had the balloons popping through. So, so those are other ideas for that kind of um, design where they're popping through. So I'm calling it a breakthrough window. <laughs> I don't know what anyone else wants to call it, but that's what we'll say. And we'll go from there. All right, just as long as we can make make the nice card. All right, so here we go. Finally, getting this card done. Thanks again for your patience and for joining on. And if you're not watching live um, and you're watching the replay, then um, then you can stop it and pause it and craft along and do whatever you need to do. All right, so this card uses the beautiful balloons, um, which is... Um, stamp set and dies. I'm just really just going to use the die here for the balloon. And then I'm going to use stylus shapes for that window. And let me show you, if you don't have stylus shapes, number one, why not? <laughs> it is so versatile. Um, you should have this in your collection. And I'm just not making a sales pitch. I truly believe it because look at all those circles that you have. They're stitched. You have, um, one, two, three, four, five, six circles, and one, two, three, four, five squares. You have four banners, all different sizes. This is kind of like a staple in your craft room, I believe. So check that out on your next order if, if you're interested. I really think that's going to be fun. Um, so this is what I did. You, of course, could just run one of these squares through your die cut machine and get just a square with the stitched edges. But if you want an actual frame, you can keep two of them together. So that's, of course, what I wanted. I wanted the frame, and I wanted to do them both at the same time. You can do one at a time and the, out the bigger one and then do the smaller one or do the smaller one first and then the bigger one. But what I did was I put them together with washi tape. And then I'm going to run that through my cut and emboss machine to get that frame. So let me bring out the machine real quick here. I'm sorry, it's, it's awfully close to the camera. But when I was using the other software, it wasn't quite as close. But you'll get the idea. Anyway, so I'm using my mini machine because it sits on my desktop. And I like having that nearby for the small product uh, projects. All right, so here we go. I'm going to just... That's already taped together. So I'm going to just put that on there. I'm going to end up with my frame. And it's helpful sometimes, guys, to tilt it a little bit so that when you're running it through your cut and boss machine, if you're running it straight, you're going to feel like a big lump, a big bump as you're going through it. If you tilt it a little bit, and I can even tilt it on my paper to make even more, the corner's going to go in first and it's going to ease in the rollers, in through the rollers a little bit more easily. You're not going to get that big tension and then clump get through. It's kind of like when you go over a speed bump, I say. Um, it's like if you kind of go over a little bit on an angle, it's not quite as bumpy. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Round goes. See, I didn't get that big lump. Big bumpy bump. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to end up with a smaller square that I can use later. And then here is my frame. Now, if you don't have this, there are ways around that you can. I cut a square approximately the same size, two and three eighths of an inch. And you can use your trimmer. Now it's not gonna, might not come out quite as fun. You're certainly not gonna have the stitching, but in a pinch, you can do this. So this frame is about a quarter inch wide. 
you can make it whatever you want but I'm going to put my paper to about a quarter of an inch here and then move my scoring tool out of the way I'm going to start I have to get up and over here I'm going to start I would normally want to start at a quarter of an inch but I'm going to be a little on the cautious side and and, and not go quite as far yet okay I'm going to come down this is going to two-thirds so I want to go to I'm um, to um, three-eighths I mean sorry about that so I want to go to one-eighth on here so there's a little line on the side of your your blade here that helps you fine-tune where you're stopping to and I can always come up and do more if you do too much you you can't undo it right so I'm going to measure again to a quarter inch I rotated and I'm going to go I can see on this line here I can match up to where my slit is I can even feel it it kind of gives way a little bit I'm going to come down again to one eighth and then rotate and you do that all the way around all right so like I said it, it's okay you get the idea and if you're not careful all right so this side I went a little too far all right but anyway so you get the idea you can go around I'm just doing this quick and like I said I was a little off but just want to show you how you can carefully do that and then you can get your frame okay but my suggestion get the stylus shapes dies you're not going to regret it believe me okay so I have my frame then I need my card base and for this I just have plain white card base so that is eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter your typical card base and then you need your typical layer which is sorry for all the ruffling but I have a lot of things in my baggie here okay so then this is your typical layer which is five and a quarter by four inches all right and then we're going to put a little bit of a subtle background over here and I'm going to show you how to do that we're going to do tone on tone pretty peacock on pretty peacock and I'm going to use the little palm leaf on here and I'm going to make a subtle little background for here so it doesn't look quite so plain now if I stamped directly on there it's going to come out kind of dark and I wanted it to be a little more subtle so what you can do is the stamp off technique and that is when you ink up your stamp you can on your scrap paper you can just stamp off one lay one amount of the ink and then stamp it onto your cardstock and you have a little bit more of a subtle look to that now I as I was doing this I was thinking okay I'm kind of wasting half of my ink granted it's not a big ticket item you know that little bit of ink that goes over there but I said all right I like to be kind of frugal and kind of um, get two for one so to speak so I had a lot of these strips over here these one inch strips from trimming down some of my other cardstock so what I did was I did my first stamp off on that and then I went on to my card and it's good to kind of do it in different random directions so that it um, looks more random all right so this way I ended up with all these strips that I can use on another card all right good idea right and like I said I, I saved myself some work and um, not wasting any ink either so pretend I went all the way around with that I'm going to fast forward to here where I already have done that layer and adhered it to my white card okay so I'm going to close this up I also stamped happy birthday on some scrap card stock and I'm going to punch that out with my lasting label punch I, and speaking of labels I love my label maker I put my labels on 
a lot of things. My punches, my stamp and blends, um, markers, things like that. So I'm just going to line that up in there and punch that out. And that's going to be my sentiment on the card. We'll put some dimensional dots behind that. All right. Then we, oh, then we want to make our, our square here. So we need a piece of designer series paper. I was able to save one more from, <laughs> from my pack. I used, um, two different designs. I used one with the spots on it and then I also used this one with the star. So either one worked nicely. So we have that there. I'm not gluing anything down yet because I'm just going to lay this out for you and show you what we're going to do. Then this is going to go over here. But what we want to do is we want to cut a diagonal slit this way and this way so that we can then curl it back and have that piece showing through. So what I like to do, the reason why I suggested liquid glue for this project is some of you are aware that this is um, called multi-purpose glue because it's a both a permanent glue and a temporary glue. If you glue something down while it's wet, it's going to be permanent. If you put a little bit of glue and just let it dry and then stick it down, it's just tacky and it's more of a temporary glue. So I'm just going to let that dry a little bit while I take care of my monkey. And when I was doing multiples, I just stamped rows and rows of the monkeys so that I could just color them all and then punch them out. So this comes bundled with the monkey punch, monkey builder punch, because you can cut out this other section here if you want to layer the face on there and then you um, have two little things I, I guess for eyes and you have a banana there too. So this is the little monkey builder punch and once you color him then you can punch him out. Now sometimes with the builder punches when you have other things in there you want to be careful with how you arrange the one thing that you want to punch out so that when you go to punch your image, I don't have other things down here that um, are going to get cut off from these other things that get punched out, like the eyes and the banana. So I had to make sure that I left space because the banana and that eye are awfully close. So you know, those are some things that you have to think about sometimes. So the way I colored these was with Stampin' Blends. I used dark petal pink for the little guy's face. And that was so quick and easy to do, just like that. You can use, um, Stampin' Blends has skin tone colors too, and many of those will work nicely as well. They don't have names to them like our other Stampin' Up colors. They actually have numbers because they're all different skin tones. But they um, can be found in the catalog as well. But this worked just fine. Uh, be careful. Um, I want to mention, when replacing the, the caps or taking them off, notice it is, you, you have noticed it's rectangular and square, but inside is round. So be careful when you're putting them in don't squish the tip. It's a fine tip, brush tip. Make sure when you put it in that it's going straight into the hole. And then make sure you just push straight down until it snaps. Some people I know have been a little too rough on their, with their caps and have actually cracked this casing here. And then sometimes this piece actually comes out. I have never had that happen. I'm so, so careful with that, but I know some people have. Some other people have suggested that if you lay it down like this, that it should go in nicely, and then you won't be smashing it, all right? It should be all lined up nicely. So that's another little hint with the stamping blend. So it's the, um, this is the pecan pie. There's a dark and a light. So I'm going to use just a little bit of dark to put a little shading where it might be a little darker on the monkey. So 
Um, usually your light source is coming from one side or the other. So you want to kind of decide where that is and then make the other side a little bit darker. So maybe under his chin might be a little darker, right? Because there might be a little, a little shading there. And I'm going to make this side just a little darker. Um, maybe the inside of his leg, um, or whatever. You just add a little shading and I'll put, um, a, a little shading around his ears here and maybe a little bit on the tail, okay? And then I'm gonna come in with my lighter color. Let that dry just a little bit, then it will blend nicely. I'm gonna come in with the lighter color and you can see how you'll still get that little shading there, but it, it blends in nicely as opposed to the other markers. I'm not going to color the whole guy here, but I'll just show you the effect that, that you get. Okay, then once it dries, if you want, you can go back and kind of work that in a little bit more. And you just kind of play around with it. And so you do get some light and dark shading there. So I've already done that on this guy here. Put that all together just so I save time on your video on your Saturday afternoon today. And I use the balloon die to punch out this out of the um, lemon lime twist, which matches with the designer series paper. And I put a little bit of twine on the back there with some glue. All right, so he's holding the string and the balloon is popping up as well. So now my frame is dry. Okay, it's not liquidy anymore. It's just very tacky, kind of like your glue dots are, right? And so now that's going to help me keep my frame on my designer series paper while I cut those slits. And um, I'm going to, you'll see why I don't just glue it down permanently first thing. Maybe some people might feel that's okay, but I I just kind of like to make sure I have this part good. So I like to just have that temporarily down. And I'm going to bring my trimmer back in. I'm going to line up from point to point. I'm going to cut a slit from this inside corner to the next inside corner. From here to here. So I'm just lining up my tip in the groove here. And again, this doesn't have to be so precise because once you curl it back, you're really not going to see, you know, if there's any minute difference. So I'm going to go around again and you can feel when you've reached the edge there. And again, you don't have to go super, super all the way to this very, very tip. All right, so I made a little X. And I'm going to just start with my fingers to curl that back a little bit, just to kind of get it started. And on this one, there's a darker background, like a dark blue here. So that will actually show up a little bit more than the one I did with the circle pattern. So now once it's started, I want to get a little bit tighter curl. So I like to take, um, I have a very thin paintbrush here, so I'm going to just start wrapping that around a little bit and just roll it. Oops, missed that tip there. Get in there. Just give it a little roll. You can make it as tight or as loose as you like. You can start tight and loosen it later as you go. All right, so then there you have your window, right? But now if I put this on here, I have that dark background there and I wanted it to look more white, like it's not so that this isn't the background there. I wanted it to look like it had more depth perhaps. So I took a smaller piece of white and this was two and a quarter or two and a half. You want it to just cover the back. All right, so I have two and a quarter square or two and a half. As long as it covers 
what you uh, slit there. All right, we're going to glue that on there. And then we can stick our monkey in there. And then we can make sure that this is all straightened in. All right. So like I said, you could have glued this on all, you know, all together. But just in case something goes wrong, I kind of liked to make sure it was good before putting my white on the back. All right. So um, obviously you want to just put glue around the edges because you don't want any of that glue to come through the window, right? And then just, if you center it, you should be good. All right, so there you go. And I'm going to glue this down for good. And like it's just a little tacky. Now I'll put it down while the glue is wet and it will be permanent. Okay, thin beads of glue, guys, because it's a thin um, border, thin frame. You don't want the glue oozing out and making the front of your card sticky and tacky because, like I said, it stays tacky. So that's both the beauty and the <laughs> the bad part about it. If you do leak it out, then it's a little tacky. Then I suggest going to your local craft store and getting a adhesive eraser because if something did leak out a little bit, once it's dry, you can take this and just rub it off. Stampin' Up! used to sell this, but not anymore. Maybe someday they'll come back with that. All right, we're going to glue that down. We're going to keep in mind to leave space for my label and my sentiment. So that will be here, and that will be there, and okay. Um, Ellen, I see that you're on. Thank you for joining. Um, you don't have to request to join. Just once you're on, you're on. Um, if you hit that request to join, that actually means you want to go on camera with me. So um, I don't think that's really what you want to do right now. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put some dimensionals on there. I'm using my sticky scissors. I only use these for sticky things. Save my other scissors for clean things. And I use up all my dimensionals here, so I'm using the edges. And remember, don't throw those away. They definitely come in handy. I'll put one right in the middle. What the heck? Got that going there. Keep it balanced. You don't want one side sagging. And we'll pop that there. Ta -da. And then we have to get our monkey in there. So this is kind of fun. It's a challenge, but it's it's a little uh, it's it takes a little bit of a little bit of maneuvering sometimes. So figure out how you want your thing to pop out, whether it's flowers or an animal or balloons or whatever. And I'm noticing that when I put this in here, the feet and the tail are going to get glued down on the inside. Then the rest of this is actually leaning apart, leaning against the parts that I curled. So I'm going to attach those with glue dots. So once I glue his little feet down, then I can adjust my curls and um, sneak in glue dots back there so that he's not going to fall out. Okay, we want him to look like he's jumping out, but we don't want him to really jump out. <laughs> so you can, you know, position whichever way you want him to go. I figure I'll go this way. So I'll put a little bit of glue, bottom of his feet and his tail, and just stuff it in there. Being careful that I don't get glue, um, I don't smear glue on the background here where I don't want it to be because you don't want it to look at that. And also you won't be able to get your adhesive eraser in there. <laughs> so that would not be good. All right, so he's stuck down in there. And now I'm just going to take my glue dots and my take your pick tool And I'm going to pick up, 
some of the glue dots and just kind of see where that's laying down and sneak it under there being sure that none of it's going to stick out and then just press it down and he's stuck I'll do the same thing behind the balloon over here can you see where that's leaning on that little curve piece Take that off here. I feel like I'm doing surgery. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna hold it together and pull my pick tool out. And he's popping out to say happy birthday. But he's not going anywhere. He's he's stuck. Yeah, I can tug it on him and he's he's just fine. So that that's really that's it, guys. And of course on the inside you can take some of your scraps of the designer paper and put little strips on the inside this might be fun if I cut a little strip and put that down the out inside there um, I'll do that later but that's the card how fun is that right and I um, again you can do it with flowers or anything else that you can imagine balloons popping through and um, different animals, that like things that you might have. So have fun with it. I said this one I covered the whole page, the whole layer, I made a whole another layer. This one I just used less designer series paper. So it can work either way. Either way there. Oh yeah, okay, so yeah, see this one has this, the circles on it and this one has the stars. The one I did for my swap, I actually used Berry Burst on the balloon because I thought it popped out a little bit more, stood out a little bit more. But this I had already done earlier. So there you go. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> it was worth it. Oh, Isabel, you stayed up. Oh, my gosh. What is it, like 11 or 12 over there? Oh, my goodness. Oh, thank you so much for for, for getting in there. Okay. Um, Allison. All right. Nice to see you, too. All right. So finally, we got it done. I will work on my software for the next time. I might pop on and off now and then randomly to check it out and get some feedback. But um, otherwise, I'm glad my old-fashioned way of doing this worked out okay. All right. So everybody have a great rest of the day. Have a wonderful weekend. And we'll see you next Friday on Coffee and a Card. And be aware that um, moving forward, every third Friday... I am not going to be doing coffee and a card at 10 o'clock because I will be doing at my local coffee shop. I will be doing cards for troops. Okay. Hang on here for a second, guys, while I flip my phone around and then I can face you a little better. Okay. There we go. Oh, there we go. Wait a minute. I want to hit my buttons. Okay, here we go. Every third Friday of the month now. I didn't do it in May because I was away. But every third Friday at a local coffee shop in a little town next to mine. It's called Arbutus. Um, at the coffee shop is Okamoka. If you're anywhere in the area, feel free to pop in. Um, we will be doing cards for troops. And I package up all the greeting cards, the blank greeting cards, in packages of six or eight. And then I we send them in care packages to deployed uh, servicemen and women. The um, I collect cards anytime. People donate cards to the cause. If you um, are making cards, make an extra one, whatever. Make a, 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 a few. Once you have a few, put aside. Slip them in a, in a little envelope for me if you don't mind and send them. And um, the only thing we ask is that it can't have anything shiny or um, like no foil or glittery things on it, no rhinestones or shiny things like that. Um, I think that's just for security purposes. Maybe shiny things catch attention, you know. So um, if you're interested in that, let me know. If you have any questions, then I, we'd be glad to welcome some extra cards to, to join in with, all right? Um, otherwise, I'll see you Friday and um, watch for my newsletter during the week. Take advantage of the 15% off the DSP, and I am hoping to get a paper share with that 15% off some of the DSP. So 
stay tuned to my newsletter and notices here on Facebook. If you're not on my newsletter, go to my blog, sign up for my newsletter by clicking the free tutorial button in the right hand side. And um, then you can get a lot of this information ahead of time. Don't just wait for, for Facebook. All right, guys, thank you for getting on. And um, okay, Ellen, thank you so much for, for watching. Yeah, you'll, you can watch the, the, the replay. And uh, yay, paper share. That's exciting, Allison. <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure if I was going to do it because of the 50% off, but I said, well, why not? You know, some people, even though it's 50% off, some people don't want a whole package. So what I do is I choose four designs and you get the paper, um, a half or a quarter of some of the, those packages, and then you get cardstock to join in. So check out the newsletter and stay tuned. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks again for joining in and hanging in there for me. Bye-bye now.